there's the difference. So this makes this sit way too high it, and it won't line up on the rotor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this backing plate, or this bracket, and we're going to switch it with that bracket. going to be doing is switching this bracket with this bracket. Now we're going to need this pin right here. That is, let's see what we got here. Not give us okay eight millimeter hex. And they got locked tight on this people, so you'll have a fight with it. All right. Well, that's the pin. We're going to be needing. This bracket is now useless to us. Now we're going to take this one out and I found out on the other side that this doesn't work so easy. So we have to use vice grips and just grab right a hold of this as tight as you can. And then Brace it and lock it loose. <clears throat> I tried to use the hex and I almost broke the hex. All right, now get this back apart again without breaking your knuckles. Unscrew this, screw the new one right on in place of it. Now, while I got this part actually give you a little bit more of a close-up on these brackets and the difference. They look almost identical from this side, but look at the difference between the holes. So we're going to take this new bracket, we're going to put some anti-seize in here, transfer to put the new hardware into it, Shouldn't have taken this out because now I want to forget which side it was in. Now, in that side there, whoops, goes into this bracket now. Now, just to play it safe, they had Loctite. I'm going to put some Loctite. Unfortunately, because we're using the old bracket, we're going to have to do the standard reconditioning and get all the rust scaling out of here, all of this out of here. So let's get cleaning that up. Yeah, these are really, really, really scaled, so we're going to have to file these as well. Where did I put the file? I know I got it over here. There it is. Right. And grind it right out of there. See all the shiny coming off? That's the scaling. That's stuff the brush. 
only polishes. give it a little bit of quick wire brush again just to be sure it's all nice and clean that looks a lot better need a portable sandblaster everything's nice and clean go ahead and put some anti-seize on it that pins all nice and clean also Get that anti seize on there. There we go again. Tons and tons and tons of more than what's needed. Scrape it all off onto the inside. So we can actually control how much we're putting on here. coat the surfaces that we just cleaned up just like that and do the same thing all four just make sure you don't have any globs but you got everything coated because we don't want it to be exposed in rust all that nice clean metal we want to stay nice clean metal Again, yeah, a very light coating. So pay a little attention to it, be a little careful. Well, now that we got your bracket ready for the new brake pads and hardware, let's grab said brake pads and hardware. All right, there's our hardware. And there's our brake pads. This little baby's been sitting out in the sun, so they're kind of hot right now. So I'm going to spot to set those down. Okay, we're going to take the caliper bracket bolts that we took out, and we're going to put one drop on each one of those for right now. That's like a drop and a half. That's a drop and a half. One of these days I'll learn how to get a drop out of this. And take the threads and just roll them around each other, evenly distribute. That's why you the anti, the thread lockers all the way around the bolt. Okay, and it's equal amounts on both, just being OCD. Set those right there for the moment. Make your hardware clips. Now remember, these little tabs right here go in the middle. Sometimes you need to use a pair of pliers to push those down in. In this case, <laughs> they're not exactly tight. So let's find out if that's just because these have already been squished in and out. I like all these parts to fit relatively snug. So we're gonna take these little ears that are in here and squish them down just a little bit each. I'll turn this around so you can see here. These little tabs right here, squish those back down flat just a little bit like that. And then we'll go insert this again. And this time it should give us a little bit of resistance on that little tab which it did, which means it'll now hold the part in. Same thing on the other side. There are wider ones, or narrower ones I should say. These are the wider of the two. And then we go ahead and Grab one caliper bracket bolt and the bracket. Slide the bracket over the rotor and get your first bolt started. 
sorry about getting in your way. I'm going to go for the bottom bolt because it's easier for me to see it at the moment. Okay, once you got that bottom bolt started, come back up, do the top bolt. It'll be even easier now that the bottom bolt is already in. And if you can, by hand, run them all the way down in. Now, before you proceed any further, because we're more or less customizing parts, you want to make absolutely sure that the space between the front of your bracket and the back of your bracket is adequate for your rotor, so your rotor's not scraping on the bracket. If that's all good, go ahead and snug it down. These two bolts right here are, I believe, 46 foot-pounds. Um, and those are 14 millimeter. Okay, both bolts are snug. Now just run down to 46. There's your 46. There's 46. Back up, double check. 46. And back down, double check. There's 46. Now we can take the brake pads, put the brake pads in. We are not treating or coating these brake pads. And around here, that just attracts dirt and salt and stuff that gets in here and just wreaks havoc. Put your brake pads in, make sure that they move around relatively easily. Same thing on the inside. Make sure you put your brake pads in facing the right directions. Again, as long as they move, you've cleaned your bracket properly. Now comes the fun part. Well, another fun part, I should say. Now we take the brand new caliper. And I'm going to point out the fact that when these things are remanufactured, and these have got to be remanufactured, these bores right here have got rust down in the bottom of them probably can't see it but there's rust down in there there's rust on the inside of the piston we're gonna add some more grease to both of these because well they never ever put enough in there especially for around here and we're gonna put some on this bolt too twist it down in you want everything lubricated, everything sealed. Don't worry about getting too much of this all over the place. Just don't have so much inside the bores that you vapor lock them or hydraulic lock them. And take your new caliper. Be particularly careful with this boot. Slide it over this pin. You're going to have to hold this up at an angle. Roll it on. I just realized I think I did the wrong side. 
No, I didn't. What did I do? Why is it this working? It worked on the other side. Why isn't it working on this side? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I don't understand that. Well, it's also not tight. I thought it was. Okay, where did this go? Oh, it's not tight. And these are 25 foot pounds. My torque wrench doesn't go down to 25. Now, why did that work on the other side but not this side? What am I doing wrong? the caliper that different on this side. Uh. Yeah, this machined edge right here is different. Yeah. That's about the only difference is this leading machined edge is different. So this might be a little bit trickier. I might have to actually Assemble this off the car. Yep. I'm actually going to have to take this caliper bracket off the car and assemble it that way. What a pain. Alright, 14 millimeter. I was just using you. Where'd you go? Seems this wants to be extra, extra stubborn. There's nothing about this job that's been going easy. Nothing. Ah, oh, come on. Including bolts. back in place. Sort of. Alright, now let's try again. Alright, now take this pen, slide this pen down in here. I don't know why this is being so difficult. it's lifting up. I don't know why it wouldn't before, but it's the way this machining is done. <sighs> Let's see. Am I going to be able to... Yep. Okay. So now we're going to put those little bolts back in the caliper bracket. Somehow... Alright. 
bear with me while everything goes sideways. All right, let's get this caliper the heck out of the way. Let's try again. All right, that one started gay. Now let's do this one. Again, 46 foot pounds on those. And we'll put the brake pads back in in a moment. Gotta go grab a short extension. Right. And the short extension gets in the way of a sway bar link. A six inch extension. And move the caliper bracket the caliper out of the way over the other side. That's not even anywhere near all the way in yet. All right. Now again, forty-six foot pounds. Where are we here? Yeah, let's fix you guys so you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. All right, again, 46 foot pounds. Okay, at 46, let's get to the bottom one on the other side, the other bottom one. There's 46. All right, so both of those are down 46. Now that we've got our caliper on here, and we can lift it up, not all the way, but enough. Take your brake shoes, slide them into place. Front, inside and out. Apparently, I gotta slide the top in first. Wow, this is really something else. There we go. Now, we gotta put a little bit of anti seize on the piston, a little bit of anti seize on the ears, just to help keep things quiet. And then the 
gears. And then just make sure you get the bolt back here and boot up and over the back of the bracket. And get that bolt started in. That's going to be torqued down to 25 foot pounds. That's a 17 millimeter. Again, I don't go all the way down to 25 foot pounds. Don't forget to put a little bit of blue Loctite on that thread as well. Now, we're going to take the old caliper, bring it over here. We're going to pinch the brake line so we don't lose any brake fluid. As soon as I figure out where my brake line pinchers are. Oh, right there, on the trunk. Alright, now the tricky part is to try to get these in a position where you're going to be able to work with them. And then that's going to fill 14 on these, but the new banjo bolt's a 12 millimeter. So let's get to 14. Just spin that one right out. Be careful with your caliper because it's full of brake fluid. Get the banjo bolt out. Okay, now. There's no washer. Nope, there's no washer. And there's no washer on there either. There's no washer on here. Somebody put a banjo bolt in here without a washer on either side of it. All right, people. Okay. Now let's get that bleeder screw loose. Get the little cap off of it. Don't lose the cap. And grab the new banjo bolt. And hardware that comes with this one. Not right here. All we want out of this hardware bag is the banjo bolt and the washers. The clips we already have with the brake pads. And I like to take the washers. You'll find that one side's got a smooth, one side's got sharp. I put the sharp towards the bolt. Put it in. And I put the other one sharp in or out towards the caliper bring it down you gotta grab that little plastic piece out that's already out okay and get that bolt started in there now you'll find there's a tiny little notch that this brake line fits into which is why I telling you to be careful where you put your needle in those pliers and grabbing your eight millimeter for the bleed screw crack your bleed screw loose and grab your 12 millimeter to tighten the, the new bolt down and these are tightened down to about seven to eight foot pounds. They're really not hard. 
just enough to crush the washer. I'll actually post the uh, the actual torque spec right here. I like to make them just a hair bit snugger. All right, now that's tight. That moves. We go ahead and release the pincher hose clamp. We've got that open, and we're just going to wait for gravity to do its thing. In the meantime, make sure your master cylinder is full. Get some of the fluid going through. Anything come out yet? Nothing even came out yet. Are you kidding me? Oh. Alright, out. that brake pedal a couple of times to get that caliper to close up. Now we should start getting some fluid coming out of that pretty soon. Doing the old gravity bleed. Tell you what, to make sure that this is actually working, I'm going to go push the brake pedal down. You guys tell me if anything squirts out of there. Let me get you repositioned right here. And zoom right down in there. All right. Let's go see if anything squirts out. That was one full depress of the brake pedal. And I can see where some of it went on the ground. So it's working. It is gravity bleeding, but wow, is it gravity bleeding slow. This knocks the bubbles out of it. Just watch the liquid coming up out. You'll see the bubbles coming across it. And when there's no more bubbles, go ahead and snug that back down. Now I'm start the car real quick, pump the brake pedal, see how it feels.
righty. Brake pedal feels pretty good now. Now let's just make sure there's no residual air in the line. Loosen that up. Gravity, gravity bleeding just fine now. And we'll take that little rubber cap that we took off and we're going to put a little bit of the silicone up inside that. Not that much, but get a little bit of silicone on there and then we can go ahead and slide that right on there. That'll help keep it from rusting in place. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel back on. Now just to make sure we drive all of the other mechanics in the near future absolutely bananas. I'm going to cover that hole with a piece of electrical tape. Maybe. Yeah, just like that. Just to drive the next mechanic nuts. So, wheel bearing hub assembly, two new calipers, two new rotors, brake pads, reconditioning the hardware, reassembling everything, getting it all ready for back on the road. If you guys liked that one, please feel free to comment, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell for upcoming videos, and don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. <laughs>